Um, so yeah, my presentation today is um, about um, building online forms um, with Civi CRM, but uh, using WordPress as the CMS of choice. So um, you might actually wonder why why I'm talking about WordPress um, since um, uh, Agileware has been a Drupal development shop for a l very long time, I don't know, 15 years, maybe more. So why, why is a Drupal shop standing up and talking about um, WordPress? And that's a really good question and hopefully um, you'll walk out of here with the answer. So, um, so yes, my name's Justin Freeman. I'm the director of Agileware. Um, I've been a web developer since about um, 2000 uh, when I first built my um, database website, whatever, online. Um, so today I'm going to talk about WordPress and Civi CRM. So in Australia, um, a lot of nonprofits, from our perspective, um, typically use WordPress. Uh, WordPress skills are generally readily available in these segments, um, and the reasons are multifaceted, but some of the reasons we see firsthand are high staff turnover um, and also ha have volunteers who join the organisation, and there's limited training opportunities as well. So you have a non-profit or association or member organisation, someone volunteers, yes, I know how to do web pro uh, website stuff, and their skills are WordPress. And so for that association, non-profit, uh, whatever, their direction goes to WordPress. And so that's typically what they build. What they deploy is their first web websites on WordPress. It's very interesting that this segment um, uses WordPress quite a lot, yet only about 20% of the active sites using Civi CRM uh, actually use Civi CRM and WordPress together, um, compared to 60% active sites uh, which use Drupal. Now that's, that's actually a really interesting metric I find because when I actually look at that segment, the segment for Civi CRM are nonprofits and associations, the technology that those organisations seem to be using predominantly on the web are WordPress, yet the marrying of the two is actually a very low sort of penetration. So why is this the case? Um, the reasons are, again, many. So um, many Civi CRM developers typically integrate with Drupal. Um, Drupal is a very sort of technical, um, deep, rich, uh, feature-rich framework, and you can really get in your teeth in it and sort of, you know, emerge three or four years later and go, wow, that was a great experience, you know, and feel like you really achieved something big. Um, Civi CRM also has, you know, a perceived sort of preference for Drupal as well, like a lot of the uh, Civi CRM team, um, core team as well, you know, work on Drupal fairly exclusively, exclusively as part of the day job or as part of, you know, other work that they do. It's really interesting. And there's nothing wrong with Drupal, it's just it's a different platform. Um, WordPress, though, is still an excellent and flexible platform to work with, and over time it's actually matured and is actually quite a challenging and uh, interesting framework. So, um, so the problem is if you've got a WordPress site and, you've, you know, and you want to adopt Civi CRM, well, how do you marry the two? Okay, um, as I said before, only 20% of um, uh, WordPress and Civi CRM sites, you know, have that sort of adoption. So you're actually, you know, almost burning a trail less travelled. So, um, so the integration can be challenging. You know, you can actually find yourself, you know, sort of in a smaller group of people outside of the bigger Civi CRM community. Some of the uh, the other challenges are, you know, the, the obvious one is that with, when you build a WordPress site, typically you'll go, right, I need such and such functionality. So you go to the plugin directory, you'll do a search for a keyword, it'll give you a list of plugins, and you go install. Civi CRM is not listed in the plugin directory. So people have to consciously go, right, I want Civi CRM, and then go find it, and then do non-WordPress things to get it installed. So that's the part of the problem. Um, the other challenges are basically it costs money. So, you know, you have to do more legwork to get that integration going uh, with CCR and WordPress. And again, if you're a non-profit association, volunteers, maybe run on donations, you know, you might have no funding whatsoever. Okay? Um, so funding can be a problem. Drupal, therefore, is a really easy solution um, because you can get what you need to do with less money. You get bigger bang for buck in that regard. And so unfortunately, you know, the WordPress problem basically goes unsolved because, you know, no one's funding the development, no one's sort of leading the charge, you know, the problems still exist. 
I thought this was sort of, I was looking for an appropriate quote, and this seems sort of appropriate. So when a fellow says it ain't the money, but the principle of the thing, no, it's the money. It's the money, it's the money. So anyway, on a different tangent, WordPress. WordPress has a really rich community, um, a lot of developers, a, a lot of, um, it has a plugin ecosystem, and a lot of the plugins are paid. And, they, and when we talk pay, we talk nominal fees. 10 bucks, 50 bucks, 80 bucks, $100. You can get a lot of bang for buck for that, that money by buying a plugin. Form builders um, available for WordPress allow you to open up a web page, drag and drop some fields, store the data on your website, or store the data in a database, or send an email out, or maybe pull some data out of your website and do things with it. There are a lot of form builders available for WordPress. And the great thing about form builders, and this the equivalent in Drupal is the web form, is that you don't need developer skills at all. So anyone at all, website editor, an author, can log in, create a form build, create a new form, put it on their website, you know, advertise jobs, collect inquiries, receive complaints, do a simple survey. Okay, so um, I just did a quick little Google. Here are the top um, form builders on WordPress. So Gravity Forms, Ninja Forms, Q Forms, Jetpack even has a form builder. Um, there's Contact Form 7. You know, the choice is sort of, you know, you're spoiled for choice, really. Um, again, in the, in the Drupal land, you know, pretty much everyone, the community revolves around WordPress, sorry, web form. But um, in, the, uh, in the WordPress land, yeah, you can actually pick and choose based on what you're trying to achieve. The, uh, the form builder I'm going to talk about today is actually Caldera Forms. Caldera Forms is a really fascinating, I find, uh, plugin. And uh, they, they're a... They have a, 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 a model of being free but offering paid add-ons. So the, that's how the developer actually monetizes the plugin. So it's free to download. You don't have to pay a cent. You can install it on your WordPress site and get a lot of bang for buck. Um, it's a drag-drop builder, has uh, conditional logic. You can do form validation, file uploads. You can even chain forms together so you can perform, you know, a series of workflow steps and, you know, have some, you know, conditional logic to branch out and maybe go to a different sort of set of forms and branch out again. You can do some pretty crazy stuff. Um, the other thing, too, is that it actually has a lot of integration add-ons available. And, again, these are relatively cheap. So you can throw up a form and you can say, okay, every time that someone submits a response to our survey, I want to get a notification on our Slack channel. And maybe I also want them to be sent off to a donation page on PayPal. And I'll add them to my MailChimp mailing list. So you can do all those things together and just chain these interactions together. So there's just some pretty logos of the interactions you can do with Caldera. All right. So we have a form builder. We have Caldera form builder and we have Civi CRM. So um, Caldera has no idea about Civi CRM at all. So you can collect data on your website and store it on the website. But if you've got Civi CRM, you actually want that data that's in your form to be in your Civi CRM somehow. And that's, that's where that sort of air gap exists. You know, how do you get that data into Civi CRM? Well, you have this guy. So Andre Mondock, or Andre Mondock, um, he's a WordPress and Civi CRM developer, works for a non-profit in the UK. He developed a plugin which fills that gap. So there's the address there. And so now you can actually put together a form, quick and easy, drag, drop, map it to your Civi CRM and say, when someone fills out this form, create a contact. Create a contact, put them in a group, record an activity, add a relationship, do some other fancy stuff. So you can actually automate all that without a developer, okay? It's all point, click, drag. So I've just listed some of the functionality you can actually do. So yeah, creating contacts, setting up relationships between contacts. Uh, you can add multiple contacts being added to your database, uh, adding groups, tags, um, recording activities. Um, you can apply deduplication rules as well. So with your form submissions, you can say, right, check if that contact is already in our database. If it is, match it to that contact. Don't create a duplicate. Um, it supports Civi CRM custom fields. So if you're using the custom fields feature in Civi, you can actually map that to the form itself, map the fields, and receive the data directly into the fields as well, which is pretty fantastic. 
Um, Caldera has this whole concept of um, attaching a processor to your form. So when you create the initial form, you can actually then feed the data through your form through these series of processes, and the processes will manipulate your data or do something with the data or you know, uh, react in some way to the data. And so what this integration does is it adds a series of processes for you to do these things with the data. So in my mind, Andre is actually a bit of a legend. Um, he actually really stepped up to the plate and filled this gap and made it a lot easier for people who have a WordPress site, who have CVCRM, or maybe they have Drupal and CVCRM and WordPress, etc., to do that integration much more easily and simply without requiring a developer. But there's always something missing. What was missing? Okay, well, there's only a few things missing. Um, you know, having the CVCRM contact selectors. So when you're building your form, you can say, oh, we want to select this contact from our existing CV database in the form. Okay, that was missing. Um, the address field support in CV, yeah, that's missing. So where you can select the, uh, the country and the states pre-populate and things like that, yeah, that didn't exist. Um, you, could, you could create uh, activities in, um, in the, uh, through the, the plugin, but it didn't support file uploads, which is actually a fairly important missing bit of functionality. So if you're asking for people to you know, submit some data and you want to prompt them for their CV or resume or you know, some other details, yeah, it didn't have that either. Um, it also doesn't support CVCRM case management, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, the Caldera plugin itself uh, doesn't have any Australian payment gateway support. So it only supports uh, PayPal and uh, Stripe, there's no support for eWay, which is what we typically use. And also, it doesn't support the concept of recording a contribution, which is very critical with a CVCRM environment because if you accept a donation, it's good to be able to record the actual contribution in the financial system. All right, so you might be wondering, why am I saying all these things are missing? Well, because with a bit of funding, those problems go away. And those problems have gone away. So. We, uh, we funded the development of some new features. So with Caldera now, you can have full support for CVCRM case management. So you can have cases created directly through your online form. There's now a uh, eWay payment gateway as well. So you can use the new eWay Rapid API to accept donations, record a contribution, and uh, take the payment directly through your form. Um, CVCRM activities um, now have file upload support. And they also have multi-file uploads. And as part of doing some of this work, we also uncovered a few bugs in Caldera, which we told them about, and wheels are turning, things are happening, and they're getting fixed. Um, these things are also possible now as well, so contact selectors, um, country, field, state, drop-downs, etc., and bug fixes. So what can you do now using this integration? So here are some typical workflows. So uh, with the Caldera form, it actually has uh, a couple of really nice features. One of them is you can actually uh, take over the user re registration experience. So when a user goes to register on your website, you can completely customise the screen that they see. So you can maybe put, you know, title, first name, last name, address fields, you know, skills, blah, 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 et cetera, username and password, and rearrange the entire form. And Caldera will replace... The, the, the typical WordPress, Drupal uh, WordPress login page and the registration page. So with that, you can also use these processes to integrate that with CV CRM so that data is stored straight into CV. Now, from a developer's perspective, the sheer fact that you can just drag, drop and set up these things is actually quite a, a revelation. Um, you can do other typical workflows like have a, a mailing subscription form that's pretty straightforward, surveys. And you know, through this integration, you can collect your data in CVCRM. So you can add them to your mailing list, record the contacts, record activities, uh, submit custom fields, etc. cetera. Um, inquiry form, simple, um, recording the contact, the activity added to the group, donations, as I mentioned, um, process the payment, record the contribution, record the activity, membership profiles. So you can expose certain fields from your CVCRM database and allow them to edit or update just those fields alone. You can do all this with Caldera. All right, now I'm gonna show you how it works. Okay. Where's my mouse? There we are. Okay, so this, this is a WordPress site, and this, this is a very basic 
standard WordPress site. So all I've done is I've just installed WordPress, I installed the Caldera plugin and then a couple of the other add-ons that are available. So we have a donation form. So here we go, here's our donation form. So we can have a donation amount, we can buy some uh, merchandise, fill out our first name, last name, etc. Um, these prefixes are filled directly out from CVCRM, so whatever prefixes you define, that'll be there. Sorry, this one. Uh, this is a very simple one. This is just a, a housing support request form. This initiates a case in CVCRM, so it'll record the contact, record an activity, and open a case in the case management system. And this is the, the very simple one as well. So this is just to contact us. So we can actually receive the contact details and just add them to like a mailing group or something like that and record the activity. So, um, so on the WordPress side, we have this add-on. So this is Caldera. All right, and then we have our three forms here. Um, and I'll just start with the, the contact us form because that's the most simplest. Yeah, so you have here the form builder. So you can actually set up your introductory text, your labels. So you can see you've got a nice little quick area here where you can just say, I just want to put in some HTML, plonk it in, put your message in there. You can add your fields to the form as well. And it is very simple in terms of how you add that. You just add the field and you say, this is the type of field I want to add and you give that field a name. So this form design, you can actually, it's responsive as well. So it's responsive out of the box. You can add columns, you know, rows, etc. Um, set fields, mandatory, optional. You can even set up uh, rules so that forms dynamically show and hide, fields show and hide based on input. So that's recalculated on the fly as well. And then across the top here, we have a series of other options. Um, email, this is, a, you know, a typical option you'll see on web forms. It's, you know, when you receive the submission, send an email somewhere. So that's, there's nothing special about that. But this is where the real magic happens. It's in this processes area. And this is really what sets Caldera apart from all the other uh, web form builders that are out there, including Gravity Forms and Ninja Forms. It actually is extensible. You can build upon it and extend it from day one. So you click on Add Processor. And we, these are all the additional features you can add to your form. So, for example, if we wanted to receive a payment through this form, we could add the eWay processor to the form. And then all I'd need to do is add a field which sets the price. And then on submit, when the form is processed, it'll see that processor, see that the mandatory fields have been filled out, and then flick me off to receive the payment. So show the user the actual payment screen, then come back, record the data. So, um, so Caldera comes with a, just a collection of uh, default processes, all the ones with a prefix of Civi CRM. These are the ones which push data into Civi. Okay, so they process data in terms of Civi land. So uh, the main ones to look at are Civi contact. So that's recording uh, contacts, uh, adding to groups, recording activities, uh, recording a payment, uh, adding relationships, uh, assigning a tag to the contact, recording address details, email address, phone, website, and IM, they're just there, and also the case. So you can actually create cases as well. Um, the great thing about these processes is you don't, you're not limited just using one. You can have actually multiple running and you can sort of chain them up. So you literally think of like the data traveling through each processor and the processor will do something with that data, maybe interact with the user, and then commit some data to CV. All right, um, I'll just show you a new one. So if we go here. So if we go new form. The other cool thing, well, the other thing I really like with Caldera is when you go new, you get a whole bunch of pre-made templates. You can just go, yes, I like that. And it just pre-fills everything for you. So you don't even have to build it out yourself. So if I, and there's these Civi ones are here by default as well. And you have so these default um, Caldera ones. And as a developer, you can actually create your own templates. So for your organization, you know, if you wanted to provide templates for your users, you could actually do this as well. So we go here. So this is our create form. So there we go. 
So it's all laid out. I don't have to drag and drop fields or anything like that. It just used that template. And if I click on our processes, there's my contact processor already set up. And down the bottom here, we have our fields. And you will see that it actually has these pre-filled. So this is where you actually map the incoming data from the Caldera form to where that data is going to go into CIVI. And it's a really simple process. It just has this concept of using tokens, just like you do in mailings. You know, you just have this token, you say, put this value here, and that's how it's mapped. So from this template, it'll record first name, last name, uh, prefix, and contact email. And if there's any custom fields, which there are, they'll be here as well. And I can populate those in the same way and set up some tokens. All right. So let's say I'm happy with that form. I can go save. And it's giving me a validation error on this thing. Oh, yeah. Dedupe rule. So I'll put my dedupe. Fair enough. Save. All right. Now here you can, you can just preview it and it'll just stick it into a default page and show you what it looks like. But if I actually go and create a new page... And up the top here, we have our little link. So you can go add form to page. So I can do that. So I can go Civicon demo, insert my form. Gives me a preview of the form. Um, what this is is actually a, a short code, which you can also copy from the form itself. You can go copy the short code and then just insert it. But yeah, it's really nice. It gives you a little visual representation of what that form will look like. So if you want to put some text above and below, you can do that as well. So I can go publish. Okay, so now I have my form published and Civicon demo. So there's my form. So I have my, select my country. So that's that's that country address thing that, that came from Civi. So our Civi set up to just be Australia. Uh, that'll do. Um, sorry, fat fingers. Address, Canberra currently. Should I press submit? <laughs> okay, I'm going to press submit. Please work. <laughs> yes, it worked. All right. So now that's hopefully worked. So I'll receive an email as well about that submission, but if I jump into Civi, and this is the other side of please, I hope it works, is I should be able to go... Um, I'll do it this way. If it doesn't work, we'll just go straight to questions. <laughs> um, Freeman, Freeman, Freeman. There we go. Oh, yes, there we go. I hope it works. <laughs> so there we are. So it works. <laughs> okay. And so, yeah, so uh, with any other submissions, with that dedupe rule, it'll find that contact and update that contact, add activities, contributions, do donations, things like that as well. So, um, so that's a, a really easy way now of getting data in Civi, building out forms without having to use the default profiles that come with Civi CRM and embed those. They can be a bit clunky to work with. Now you've actually got a really nice interface which you have greater control over and you can do a lot more with. So, yeah. Um, all right, I've got three minutes left, so I'll just quickly whiz through the last bits. Just, just a question, does the, the Caldera form work with the checksum token, like uh, where forms do fiddle? I don't know. That's a good question for Francis, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Sorry, Seamus. I'll, I'll take it on notice, that one. Um, we still have some more work to do. Um, so there's... Um, 
So that e-way uh, integration is functional, but you know, pre-filling contact details, uh, setting tax amounts correctly, things like that, that's still work that needs to be done. Um, the contact selector is there, it's working, it just needs some improvement. It, uh, we do, or I would like to see uh, better field level help. So it's easier for people to understand, oh, what value CV is actually expecting here? So just a little underscoring. And some, maybe some new form templates. Uh, the validation error messages, as you saw when I was like, okay, there's a validation error, what is it? Um, it would be good to actually improve that so you know, users know what was wrong. Um, the other thing too is, as these forms get more and more complex and you're integrating with CV and maybe to run it through, uh, through a few processes, um, sometimes a processor will fail. And what happens in Caldera is if a processor fails, it just sort of says, okay, no, nah, I can't do anything with that data, and it just skips it. And um, I guess it's more of a Caldera thing. It would be good to know when that sort of happens because it, it can be a struggle sometime setting up your processes. Um, I thought it was also a good time to uh, just quickly talk about some more exciting work that's underway with the WordPress and the CVCR integration and there's WooCommerce and uh, there's a team of developers currently doing integration with WooCommerce and CVCRM so you can have an online shop, have your contacts who registered and buy things and record those contacts in CV and also record contributions and activities and things like that so you've got tight integration with your shop. If you don't know WordCom WooCommerce, it's one of the most popular shopping carts um, in the world. Um, yep. So is that okay? There we go. Yes, Mick. Um, I've been asked a number of times by clients who uh, can um, see, can I have a, a landing site, <coughs> a marketing landing site in WordPress that could talk to that could talk to Siri, but their core site is a, <coughs> is a Drupal Siri interact integration. Yes. I know that Siri can have multiple domains. Yes. Can it have a both a, a Drupal uh, integration and a WordPress integration? Uh, no. Yes. <laughs> yes. I won't do it on stage, but yes. Yeah. Um, does the Caldera have to live on the same business yes. server? Yes. Yes. There has to be part of the same software on that. Um, so wherever Civi is, the way you do integration with Civi, the, the other websites which you integrate with Civi have to be on that server where Civi is for that integration to work. I think it's a really interesting concept. You could do like REST APIs to a remote Civi database, but I don't think anyone's done any work on that. And maybe Shane's not. Well, we don't like to expose our core Civi to the public. Yep, it's good. It's, uh, good point. Rather than have that on yep. a secondary yep. server that. Updates every next service. Yep. Yep. For that, it has to be on the same. The demo I showed you, yes. Eileen, did you have a question? I was only going to answer to that quiz thing that we get operated with the same city site. The only thing that I know of is uh, city the first page, which is a Drupal thing, but that adds to that, you know, just sort of trying to use uh, web forms and the best interface, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? I was going to ask if you had an example of the WordPress Drupal City organisation. Okay, so I did it really in a migration situation. We had a site which was set up to be just a city banking site, and then it was, and then there was an existing WordPress site that we got control of, so we put the two together, so I kept the Drupal, and just kept the people who were used to using it through Drupal, on yeah. Drupal, and then I put it and we moved to the WordPress as well, and now just that everyone's using WordPress site, we're gonna drop the Drupal site and put another <laughs> WordPress site on yeah. that domain, because they want to put a second WordPress site to it now. I guess it's probably complicated for WordPress. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Just can you um, upload files to that? Ah, yes. Yeah. So there is a uh, there was a file upload, and uh, the work that we uh, we funded allows uh, um, called the advanced file uploader. So you can upload multiple files. You just drag and it uploads them, and then it, you can record them, uh, attach them to an activity. So they're in CV as well, accessible in CV, which is pretty sweet. Like uh, an electronic signature, and if you need something, just sign it. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, there's there's actually a H two. 
there's a HTML5 widget where you can actually sign stuff. And I guess, yeah, you could. I mean, it's possible. The, the great thing about Caldera is you could extend it and add that functionality in. It, it doesn't exist today. No, I don't think so. I'll, I'll have to have a look. But yeah, I have actually seen uh, one of our other CVCRM users do exactly that, and that's how I know about that signing thing. Yep. All right, thank you, everyone.